Let me show you how I create the chord progressions in Cubase. It's fast and it's easy. Hey, what's going on? I'm Chris Tillim here from Mixdown Online. Very excited to announce you that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'm going to talk to you more about Skillshare during the video. But now let's jump right in and talk about chord progressions. Now, if you're like me and you're not dumb, Sigalas, hey bro, and your music theory is not that great, you're going to love this tool that we have in Cubase. Now, on my side, I grew up as a drummer. You know who you call someone who hangs out with musicians? <laughs> a drummer! Okay, so let's jump in Cubase and check this out. I'm going to share you my process when it comes to create chord progressions in Cubase. So the tool that I love the most to start with is the chord pads. This is an amazing tool that we have in Cubase. And the thing that this is going to do, it's going to allow you to play some chords straight on your controller. Or if you don't have any controllers, you can use your keyboard, your computer keyboard by activating the virtual keyboard. You just click on Alt and K and that will activate this little guy, which is going to be your virtual keyboard. And those keys will trigger those chords that we have here at the bottom in the chord pad section in the lower zone. Now, if you don't see that chord pad section, just make sure that the uh, lower zone is open. And at the bottom, you just select the chord pads tab and that's it. Once this is done, the only thing you need to do is to just select one virtual instrument. And I'm usually going to work with a piano sound just to begin with. And then I'm going to work with other sounds to get more inspiration. So let's open this piano. I'm going to close my virtual keyboard because I already have my controller right here. So if I click on C1, it's going to play a C chord. So this is very easy if you just want to create some chord progressions, working on some different chords, you can do that in a very fast way. Now, um, what I like to do to start with is to choose the tonality I want to work in. And to do so, you just need to click on the chord pad presets and click on load chord pad presets. And then you have access to a bunch of different keys to work with. So uh, let's, for example, select D minor. Okay, I love the key of D minor. And there you go. Now I have all of the chords loaded straight into the uh, chord pads section, um, you know, and ready to go. Super easy. Next, what I do, I create myself a drum groove. Very cool 80s sound, and this one comes from Helion Sonic in Cubase, but this is the modern 80s drum kit, you know, created by Dom C. Gallas. Very cool drum samples. Uh, so I'm going to work with this uh, drum groove, and I'm going to try to create uh, a chord progression around it. So what I'm going to do is just to jam a bit, I'm going to say, you know, and try a few different things to see what works best. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's uh, do something else now. Okay, so there you go. So it didn't take me a lot of time uh, to just uh, to come up with those two different chord progressions. Just a matter of experimenting a bit. And that's it, you know, so very easy. I don't know if you noticed, but the voices were uh, were changing, um, you know, the, the further I, I played the, the progression. And that is a very cool thing that we have here in the chord pads. You can change the voicing uh, of each chord that you have. And the only thing you need to do is to click on that small arrow. And this will create different types of voicings for all the chords or one individual uh, chord pad. Um, if you want to, you can also uh, play with the tensions. And you also have access to the chord editor, which is going to allow you to change the chord or to modify the existing one. 
What I like to do is to click on this small arrow and to lock all pads when I start to work on a chord progression. And the reason I do so is because when you uh, uh, you play a chord progression with the chord pads, Cubase will modify the voicing as you go to add a bit more excitement and color to the progression, which is great and awesome. Uh, but when I'm writing like the basic chords of a song, I just tend to lock them up so uh, the voicing doesn't change as I go. When you're ready with your chord progression, you can actually just drag and drop them on top. So let's go with the, this one to start with, the B flat, then let's go with the C. So that is one way to work, but what I like to do is to play those chords directly on the uh, my controller. So this way I can play a bit more with the rhythmic, you know? So let's try this one out. Okay, so there you go. I'm going to keep that as is. So super easy, super fast, and very cool to experiment with. Now, you don't like the key that you work in? Let's change it. You go back there and you can try different keys. Just select one of them and start playing. And that's it, you know? Now, uh, let's go in B minor. You know how easy that is? Before we move on, this is the perfect time to talk to you about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people. You will find topics such as animation, creative writing, photography, illustration, graphic design, web development, marketing, lifestyle, fine art, and also music. So if you're looking into learning piano, guitar, bass, synthesis, and even music theory, which is in topic for today's video. Skillshare is an amazing option. On my side, I joined Skillshare like three years ago when I switched from Mac to PC. So I also had to switch video editing software from Final Cut Pro to Adobe Premiere. So this is when I decided to join Skillshare and took a class from Jordi from Cinecom, which was an introduction to Adobe Premiere. That class was amazing and I learned everything to be able to edit my YouTube videos with Adobe Premiere. And I've been a member since then. What I also like about Skillshare is that they focus a lot on learning. So that means no ads whatsoever. And they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity leads you. And the best part, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Now, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get the free trial of the premium membership so you can get a chance to explore your creativity. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Now, back to Cubase. Now, I have my chord progression recording right here. I'm going to right-click and select Create Chord Symbols. And that will create the chord track right on top. Okay, so I'm going to just change the color of the track. And there you go. Okay, so those are all the chords that I have within my chord progression that I just recorded. So very practical. Now, I can change things around, tweak on the, uh, the tensions of the chords, or even change the full chord if I want to. What I'm going to do first is to mute my performance and uh, make sure that the chord track triggers my piano sound by having the monitor on on my piano VST channel. And this way, the way the chord track is set up at the moment, which is use monitored tracks, this will allow the chord tracks to trigger all the chords with this piano sound. Now, if you want to work on chords or create new ones, you can do so straight from the chord track, which is something that I also work with. So I'm going to double click on the D minor chord. That will open the editor, the chord editor window. And this is going to allow me to change the chords or the, uh, the chord type, major, minor, diminished. Okay, even the tensions or even the bass note. Pretty nice. So um, let me keep it this way. So I have a D minor seven and let's uh, add 
that actually sounds pretty cool. Okay, this is actually pretty nice. Let me just uh, tweak that around and add this change on the second time around. Okay, so there you go. Something else that I can do to change chords or to get some suggestions is to, again, double click on my chord and then go to Chord Assistant, which is the tab right here on top. Now I have three tabs at the bottom, the list, the proximity, and the circle of fifth, which is super helpful to get some inspiration or suggestions uh, by Cubase for new chords. Uh, so if I start with the list one, I'm gonna keep that the mode to common notes. You can also choose a cadence, but I'm gonna keep that to common notes. And this is gonna give me some suggestions according to the complexity that I have right here. Uh, and the complexity will uh, just, you know, give me access to more complex chords as far as suggestion goes. Um, now this is gonna go according to the previous chord that I have within the chord progression. So for example, if I wanna change that F major chord, I can choose uh, C, D. It's actually pretty cool, let's try this out. Nice, okay, I'm just gonna duplicate this. I kinda like that, that minor uh, major switch. That's pretty cool. So let's go back to uh, this chord again and let's go with uh, circle of fifth, which is actually very nice also. Now, I know that my chord progression is in D minor. So I'm gonna bring this to minor and bring D minor up. It's very well done because now I see all the chords part of D minor listed from one to seven, which are the same chords that I have on my chord pads. And now those are the suggestions that we have to find new chords. Some will be further away from the root chord, but some are gonna be closer and can add some very nice tone. Okay, so let's go with G. I'm gonna keep G this time. So let's have a quick listen. Okay, so there you go. So that works as well. It, it, it kind of gets me out of the, uh, uh, the D minor key because G is not part of D minor and it adds a bit of color to the chord progression, but I kind of like the D major uh, on this part. So I'm gonna keep it as it was. And if I go back to the chord assistant, there's also proximity uh, that is gonna give you uh, choices, you know, uh, between a bunch of different chords that are close to the previous chord that you have on your chord progression. Okay, so that can also work out. Now, if I wanna add more chords, I can play them again using the chord pads, uh, or I can just write them down, you know, by just selecting my pen tool, double click on the next one, or just double click again on the last chord. Go to the chord editor and click on the next one and plus, and this is gonna create a new chord. So we can go back and forth with those arrows. So this is a very nice and creative tool when it comes to chord progression creation. Uh, I don't know if there's any other DAW out there that offers that type of feature, but in Cubase, this is quite amazing, to be honest. This is one of my favorite Cubase feature. And what I'm gonna do next here is to, um, to just select all of those chords and bring them down to my piano track. And now I have those chords in MIDI notes. I'm gonna select them all and glue them together and I'm gonna mute the chord track. Then I'm gonna double click on my MIDI event and that will open the MIDI editor. And from this point on, if I want to change some, you know, voicings or tensions, I can do so, you know, even after I recorded those, uh, those chords. So let's say, for example, um, I wanna change that C chord uh, to minor. 
I can do so by just on the left zone, just click on the chord editing window, select your chord that you want to work on. And there you go. You have like a bunch of stuff uh, that you can work with within the chord editing tab. Okay. On the left zone. So if you want to change that to minor, you can do so. Sus2. Diminished. Very nice. You can change the inversion also. Also very cool, you can drop by two, by three. And this guy actually gonna space out the notes of the chords, you know? So very useful stuff, you know? You can also create some uh, some chords afterwards straight from the chord editing uh, um, tab right here. So if I select that insert function that I have here, that is the um, uh, kind of a narrow icon, I can, for example, let me go with major. I can just click anywhere, you know, on my next uh, bar. And this is gonna add a major chord according to where I click in my MIDI editing window. I want a sus2 chord. Okay, so very cool, very well done. So you can create you know all the chords that you want. So <laughs> super easy way again to tweak things up after you're done recording your uh, your chord progressions. Okay, now let's go back to the chord pads. What I'm gonna do next is to just bring those different chords that I created on the chord track. I'm gonna bring them down on an empty pad by just dragging them on the pad itself. And that's it, you know, I'm gonna do the same for my, uh, my D major. And there you go. So let me just bring back the piano. So if I want to play around the chords again, re-record everything, I now have access to those different chords that I created myself. I can also add more by just clicking on that arrow that will open up the chord editor. And from this window, I can you know add the chords that I want within those empty, uh, empty pads. And to finish this off, what I do all the time, I start with the piano sound, but I do experiment with other types of sound. Uh, so let's bring that chord progression on another VST instrument and check what we have here. So, so I have this uh, virtual synth from, uh, from Arturia. Okay, that's pretty cool. So let's bring this one down. And let's add a bass on this one. So by experimenting with different sounds, different tones, even by using the same chords to start with, you know, you can actually build up a, a good foundation uh, for a new song. So that's gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Until next time, take care and see you.